This Monday morning on Wake Up With Hope, we have a wonderful message brought to us by Gene Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy, music by Lifelong Worship, and a unique, hearty, meatless, sloppy joe recipe from Gia Olive and Moses. Stay with us. Happy Monday morning to you, and thank you for joining us this Monday morning at Wake Up With Hope. It's another great day at Wake Up With Hope. We're excited to be waking up with you and kicking off the week, sharing the hope and love of Jesus. On today's program, we have a wonderful message brought to us by Gene Boonster from The Voice of Prophecy, music by Lifelong Worship, and a unique, hearty, meatless, sloppy joe recipe from Gia, Olive, and Moses. But first, this day in history. On this day in history, in the year 1968, just after 6 p.m., Martin Luther King Jr. was fatally shot while standing on the balcony outside his second-story room at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. The day before he was assassinated, King delivered his last sermon, saying, we've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter to me now because I've been to the mountaintop and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. Friends, the wonderful thing is that Martin Luther King Jr.'s dreams and hopes did not die with him. In fact, quite the opposite happened. Thousands continue to march and fight for freedom and equal rights. You know, even today, we strive to protect the equal rights of everyone, irregardless of race, gender, disability, and other differences. And did you know that the same happened with Jesus? When Jesus was dying on the cross, his enemies saw him as one who had been defeated. What they didn't realize was that his death actually symbolized victory. His death signified that the battle had been fought and the battle had been won. He lived a sinless life and Satan had been overcome. You know, Jesus' death symbolized that he accomplished everything that he came to earth to accomplish. And that's to save you and me from our sins. And of course, the death could not keep, keep him down, and death had no sting over him. He resurrected three short days later and showing the power he had over death. You know, Jesus' death and resurrection holds that very same hope for you and I. Because he died, he rose again. And because he rose again, when we commit our lives to him, we will rise again to live and see the true promised land. Amen. That yeah. is so beautiful. Are you looking for the perfect recipe for Meatless Monday? Well, we've got you covered. Gia and her sous chefs are back today sharing a healthy, hearty, and unique Meatless Sloppy Joe recipe using none other than lentils. What are we making today, Mama? Sloppy Joe! Sloppy Joe! What are Sloppy Joes? Well, Sloppy Joes are very popular in America, but our family have been making Sloppy Joes for a few years now and we love it. In America, they make it with ground beef and they throw it on a bun like a burger, but we are gonna make it with lentils. So this is how we make it. It's a very simple recipe. It's a quick recipe. I mean, it takes a while to cook the lentils out, but it's quick to put together. So we're gonna put the onions in. I've just put a little bit of water down the bottom of the pot so that I can um, fry my onions off. So red capsicums and onions go in first and we just cook those until they're soft. The Sloppy Joes have been cooking for about five. Five minutes, yeah. Yeah, five minutes. We've been um, frying off the onion with some water and it is looking so good. The onion and the red capsicum and they've softened up now and we're ready to put the rest of the ingredients in there. Now. What we're gonna put, you're gonna give me the ingredients, okay? So can you give me the chili first? Chili. Chili, yep. Olive, can uh, you, yep. Can you put the chili in there? Be careful, it's hot, very good. Now mix the chili round. We only put a touch of chili. You don't have to put the chili in there if you don't want it, but it does give it a bit of a tang. Can you give me the salt? Let's, 
salt, good work, salt, pass it down. Salt in there, oh, I'll put some extra salt in there. I love salt, okay, and there we go. Are uh, you, because you love lentils. Lentils are my daughter's favorite dish in the world. Okay, Momo, can you give me the rest of the stuff? Can you give me the Dijon mustard? I know you know what Dijon mustard is because we got it together. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so inside this Dijon mustard, I've got Worcestershire sauce. And now this is one of the ingredients the Americans use and it just really tastes good in there. So the Worcestershire sauce I get is the one without, um, a lot of them are made with anchovies. The one I get is without, so just check the back. Um, some people just don't like anchovy, the flavor and stuff. I just like to stay away from all that. Mix that through. And then we've got, the kids are having a great chat here, so I'll keep going. Maple syrup, just a touch of maple syrup, just to give it some sweetness. Yum, and then soy sauce. And then that's it. Now, can you give me the lentils and the tomato? I've got the tomatoes, some tomatoes, a can of crushed tomatoes or canned tomatoes. Me put it in. Oh, she's gonna put the lentils in, and you can help me put the, you can help me put the liquid in. Whoa, all in there. Can you help me put the liquid in? Okay. Okay, let's go. Are you ready? Oh no, you're gonna have to hold it. Kind of looks like a salad. Does it? A salad. Okay, ready? Whoa. And all we're doing now is putting vegetable stock. That's it, just with water. May do it? So a touch of rice vinegar. There we go. Now, we are gonna let this cook out on a slow, uh, a medium low heat. And we're just gonna stir it every 10 minutes. It should, once the lentils are cooked, it's done. And we'll be back to show you exactly what it looks like. So we'll keep stirring and we'll leave it on the heat for a while, okay? So our sloppy joes are ready. I've been cooking it out. So what I did is I put the lid on and I let it simmer for as long as it took for the liquid to, to go and for the um, lentils to get soft. Now what I've done here is we've cut open just buns. Any buns will do. We like using wholemeal buns. And I'm going to put the sloppy joes on top of the buns like, like a burger and Throw your sloppy joes, it doesn't matter, it's sloppy, some of it will come off. I like putting some yogurt on top, so I'm using coconut yogurt, and then you just put your bun on top, and that's how you eat it. And I actually have some corn here, because my kids love corn, and so putting some corn on the side. And there you have it, your meal. Cheap, easy, quick, enjoy our recipe, try it, let us know what you think, we'll see you next time. Are you enjoying today's show? Well, inspire someone else and share us with a friend. Or you can go to our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to see more inspiring content. In just a few moments, we're going to have music by Lifelong Worship. We'll see you in a minute. Wake up with hope. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We are blessed to be with you this morning. Amen. You know, in Psalms 46 verse 1, we are reminded that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. And this morning, lifelong worship reminds us through song that God surely is our refuge and strength. They will be singing a mighty fortress. A mighty fortress is our God A bulwark never failing Our helper he amid the flood Of mortal ills prevailing for still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not easy.
Well, it's time for us to take a short break as we get ready for the motivating devotional thought this morning. When we return, Voice of Prophecy's Gene Boonstra will be here to share with us. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We hope your day is starting off on the right foot as you bask in the love and peace found in Jesus. And now we have Jean Boonstra from our friends at Voice of Prophecy sharing today's morning devotional. Have you ever wondered how you'll be remembered in the future? What will others say about you after you're gone? Well, there's an account of a woman in the Bible that encourages me. Jesus said of her that she did what she could. She did what she could. I wouldn't mind if that's how I'm remembered after I'm gone too. You know, this woman's act has not been forgotten. And in fact, Jesus predicted that we would still be talking about it today. The woman was Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Jesus did much for Mary's family. He forgave her her sins, and he raised her brother from the dead. You know, Mary spent time with Jesus. She knew him, she loved him. And one day, about six days before the Passover, so less than a week before Jesus was arrested, she had a wonderful opportunity to show her love. Let's read about it. It's recorded for us in Mark chapter 14, beginning in verse 3. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman, who was Mary, came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. 
and they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, and whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. You know, Mary performed a beautiful act of love. And we know that the woman in this story is Mary from other places in the gospels where the story is also recorded. Now, let's picture the setting. There in the home of Simon, whom Jesus had healed from leprosy, gathered Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And then Jesus and his disciples arrived. As Martha served the meal, Mary, likely as she had in the past, sat and soaked in each of Jesus' words. And then she reached for the alabaster flask. Now, had Mary planned ahead to anoint Jesus with the fragrant ointment? Perhaps she brought it with her, and Jesus had been speaking of his soon approaching death for a while. The disciples, too, though, had heard Jesus speak of his death, but for them it hadn't seemed to sink in. So perhaps Mary planned this act thinking about Jesus' death, but more likely she planned to show her thankfulness and love toward Jesus. She poured out the fragrant oil as an act of worship. And so again, let's imagine the scene. Jesus, Simon, Lazarus, and the disciples are dining. Mary quietly poured out her act of worship. She poured the fragrant oil on Jesus' feet. We know that from other gospel accounts that tell us that. Her reverent tears fell as she mopped up the oil. Now mixed with her tears, she used her hair. And she poured the oil on his head too. Now, I imagine Mary did all of this quietly, not hoping for an audience, but the fragrance of the spikenard would have filled the room. The scent turned the heads of the disciples, and the murmuring began. We're told in another account that it was Judas who complained. He grumbled about the waste of the expensive ointment. It could be sold, and the money given to the poor a bold and selfish statement when Judas knew what he would really do with the money. He would pocket it for himself just as he had done with other monies collected for Jesus' work. The criticisms rippled through the room. Mary, she must have frozen, embarrassed. Maybe that was foolish, she must have thought. Did she hide the now empty alabaster flask? Did she try to wipe the fragrance from her still damp hair? And she must have wondered what Jesus would be thinking. Would he criticize her too? But Jesus didn't. And his words justified her pure act of worship. Mary gave the oil selflessly, as opposed to Judas's critical words. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. She has done what she could. Jesus quieted the criticisms, and in defending Mary, he gently rebuked Judas. Jesus knew Judas. He knew the events that would follow and that Judas carried betrayal in his heart. Yet in his response to Mary, Jesus was gentle with Judas as well. He could have called out his hypocrisy. He could have embarrassed Judas, but that wasn't the point. The point was to recognize the worship. And so, relieving Mary's anxiety about the act, Jesus showed her the deeper, eternal meaning of what she had done. He said, She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Now, the disciples still hadn't accepted what he'd been saying, that his death was imminent. Yet here was a woman who, through her faithfulness, was allowed to be a part of what was soon to come. She anointed Jesus' body and poured out her offering while he was still alive. Here, Mary received another gift. She was able to hear his response to her act of thankfulness and love. And she was blessed by Jesus' words. You know, Mary spent time with Jesus. 
Judas spent time with Jesus and their relationship with him, the motives of their hearts and their actions toward him, <laughs> they could not have been any different from each other. Mary, an ordinary woman forgiven by Jesus, she did what she could. She took the precious fragrant oil and she poured it out on Jesus' head and his feet. And as Jesus predicted, here we are today, still marveling at her gift. She did what she could. And I can't think of a better way to remember her. Well, let's pray together this morning, Hope Channel family. I'm so thankful to start another week with you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for preserving this record of a beautiful act of worship by a forgiven woman. Lord, as we remember Mary's anointing of Jesus, our hearts are moved. Lord, her unselfish gift is a reminder that we can choose you. We can choose to worship and to pour our hearts out to you. Lord, take away any selfishness in our hearts this week and let us see you just as Mary did. Amen. Well, Mary poured out the fragrant oil and she anointed Jesus while he was still with her. The fragrant aroma filled the room and showed everyone how much she loved and was thankful for Jesus. Who do you need to say, I love you to, while there's still time? This week, look for those that you can encourage. Do what you can, just as Mary did. Well, we at The Voice of Prophecy pray that you wake up with hope each and every day. Thanks for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store, you can have hope in the midst of it. Take God with you every step of the way. Thank you so much, Jean. And friends, thank you so much for being with us here today, watching Wake Up With Hope. And please join us tomorrow as Jesus 101 will be with us to share a morning devotional. We will have a dedicated prayer session and a special feature on how to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes. And we will have heavenly music by Alessandra Sorace. If you enjoyed today's messages and would like to learn more about the Bible, visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. You know, we have no doubt that our free Bible studies are sure going to be a life changing experience for you. Again, that's hope.study. And before we go, we want to share with you a Bible promise. Today's Bible promise is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Oh, friends, this promise is so profound. Not only is Jesus promising to be with us during our times of physical grief, but he also promises that when we see ourselves compared to him and realize how much we fall short, guess what he does? He promises to lift us up. He, care, he promises to carry us and hold our hand. And as we walk with Him, He promises that we will gain the victory. Amen. What a beautiful promise. We hope you enjoyed your time with us today from the very bottom of our hearts. We wish you a happy Monday. Yes, we do. Let's pray together. Our Father in Heaven, Lord, what a wonderful way to start the day with promises. And not just any promises. These are promises that come from one who does not lie, from one who is faithful, from one who is constant. And Lord, we're going to take these promises to heart. And we're not going to fear what we face today because we know that you will be with us. Thank you, Lord, for the victories that we're going to experience today. We thank you now for them. And so we pray, Lord, that as we begin this day, that you will fill our hearts with hope and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen.